My name's Elmer Wren, Jr., I should say. My dad's been in a, here in the sporting goods store. He bought it from some old Yankees back in the 30s, in 36, and I've been here for 20 years. Uh, we're a small sporting goods uh, retailer. We also do cut and sew and embroidery and screen printing and that type of stuff upstairs. So I've been in Lowell quite a while. I knew, uh, I knew Nathan's daughter. Which daughter? Which daughter did I know? I knew Shifra after we went to school, but I went to, uh, I was in the same year in high school. We didn't go to the same high schools as uh, his daughter, Roz, who I knew all through high school. And then I got to know Richie, his, his son, who, who went to uh, who went to Phillips Academy after I had gone there. And he did uh, pretty well. And went, he's quite a, a left-leaning legal type. <laughs> who was always embarrassed to hear his father telling stories. Dad! Dad! Mrs. Berkeley. Nathan, be quiet. Don't be telling him those things. First, he maybe didn't like you? Well, no, he, he, didn't, he didn't really like me as a customer, because he'd say, oh, no, no, he's too fussy. He's too fussy. But I'd, I'd go in, and uh, Mrs. Burke was nice, so she'd let me look through the clothes. But he'd always, uh, he wouldn't have time for me. Although, as a, as a uh, customer, he didn't have time for me. But he always had time to sit down and talk with me. And we got to be pretty good friends. And uh, we'd, uh, of course, his grandchildren needed some things over here. And we'd swap back and forth. And he was one of the toughest guys to ever get a, get a nickel out of it. He'd always call me his, uh, what was it? I was his Irish Catholic. Irish Catholic kike is what he used to call me. <laughs> and what do you think he meant by that? Oh, he just meant that I was a uh, a guy that wouldn't give something away, <laughs> pretty much. You know, he'd uh, he'd have uh, he had some respect for me, and he liked me. He always said that his daughters were gone. <laughs> Meaning he wanted to fix. Well, actually, his his daughter uh, Shifa, she was uh, divorced at the time, and. Sally said, "No, no, don't, don't talk to him about her." And he said, "Oh, he doesn't want her. She's used goods anyway. Again, you know, <laughs> very nice girl." <laughs> but talking about his past used to be a lot of fun. About his treks out of Poland and through Russia, and then uh, to talk about religion with him when he was trained as a uh, as a rabbi, I, I believe. And he uh, got into America because he was a rabbi, and he used to talk about his uh, how the CIA or the FBI was after him for years. Back when he was, uh, he lived when he first came to uh, the U.S. I think he was uh, sponsored by a uh, by a rabbi in uh, in New York City, and he got him to sign the papers on that. He had never, I don't think he had ever really practiced as a, as a rabbi, but uh, the documentation was good enough, and he went up. He settled up in Vermont. He lived way up in the woods of Vermont, and he had rigged up a huge antenna. So the neighbors were all nervous of this guy with a foreign accent, and uh, they must have reported reported uh, to the police or something about him. And uh, he said he was hounded by the by the CIA and investigated all the time because he had like a, a ham radio set up. So he thought they, he was broadcasting to Russia with all, all this stuff. He hated the Russians. I liked the Russian people, but you know, he didn't like Stalin too much. He had a lot of respect for the Russian people. He couldn't believe that America had turned their back on the Russians after the war, because the Russians, of course, they carried World War II. They had more people die than almost everybody combined. And, uh, you know, Though he sympathized with the Holocaust, the, the Russian sacrifice to him was even greater. And, uh, he used to talk about how the Russians loved FDR. He used to say, "You know what they call? You know what they call powdered eggs in Russia?" He does. You know what they call powdered eggs? And it was, it was Roosevelt's Roosevelt's balls. <laughs> Is what he they called powdered eggs in the Soviet Union. And he finally got out of there, and uh, he was quite a guy when he, all the the stuff that he went through, and that's why he didn't really have much patience with uh, the welfare state, because the people were just given things, and he he worked he worked real hard. 
he was always, you know, he, he would just hang on, persistently hang out at manufacturers' places and he'd be thrown out and he'd, he'd get the goods. He'd always get the goods and have good buys and, uh, you know, he'd turn a profit and all the more successful lawyers in town always dressed at Burke's. I know some people that, <laughs> I bought a, a, uh, a Harris Tweed sport coat from him one time and, uh, it was a really nice jacket, and I think it was only about 50 bucks, and this isn't that long ago. And, uh, of course, half the time, there'd be no labels in them, because he'd get it before the labels, you know, it'd be uh, production overruns. And uh, it was funny, he so, said, you want a label? You, you opened up the drawer, and he had about 50 of the uh, Harris Tweed labels, and handed me one. <laughs> My longest talks with him were always about religion, though, and he'd uh, he'd go on and on about that religion and the. Uh, I'm afraid he wasn't very optimistic about uh, the future of American generations at all. It was uh, he thought everything was going to fall apart. He liked uh, he liked Roosevelt and he liked the New Deal, but everything by by now is just an all all giveaway. He'd. Uh, so he, he was he one did, of the early critics of the welfare state or something? Well, he was, uh, well, he just thought people were getting things for nothing. You know, for the same reason, uh, we used to talk about what, uh, when sneakers were like $100 and kids were getting killed with sneakers. He couldn't believe it. He said, the kids are all spoiled, you know, what's, what's going on? It's the, it's the parents that ought to be thrown in jail, you know. It always, uh, I don't know if he'd... He, I don't think he was particularly talking like Howard Cosell about any particular racial group when he he'd call them all monkeys, all all his customers, and uh, they weren't. Uh, I don't know. He just didn't have much hope for the future.